वेलकम बैक टू माई चैनल फाइव मिनट इकोनॉमिक्स वेर आई टीच इकोनॉमिक कॉन्सेप्ट इन स्पैन ऑफ जस्ट फाइव मिनट्स द टॉपिक फॉर टूडे इज द किनिशियन थियोरी ऑफ आउटपुट इनकम एंड एम्प्लॉयमेंट विच इज द पार्ट वन ऑफ दिस पर्टिकुलर किनिशियन थियोरी आई विल डेफिनेटली बी कमिंग विद अनदर पार्ट विच विल बी द पार्ट टू एंड विच विल बी कम्पलीटिंग दिस इन टायर थ्योरी सो आई वॉज यूमिंग यू ऑलरेडी वॉच द वीडियोज ऑफ द क्लासिकल थ्योरी विच वॉज हाईली क्रिटिसाइज बाई कीन्स एंड ओनली देन डिड ही कम अप विद हिस पर्टिकुलर वर्जन ऑफ द थ्योरी इन दिस पर्टिकुलर वीडियो आई विल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट द आउटलाइन of the theory the assumptions along with the adf and asf function and i will be explaining you the equilibrium and basically all you need to know about this particular theory so yeah guys let's get started also guys don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel and follow me on instagram at 5 minute economics So firstly guys let me give you a little background of this particular theory so as the name suggests this theory was formulated by John Maynard Keynes in his very famous work general theory of employment interest and money in 1936 so basically guys this theory was a critique of the classical theory which was established before this and this classical theory believed in the automatic adjustment the invisible hand remember i've taught you all of that in the classical theory and keynes was highly against this concept in fact that is the reason why he came up with this theory during the post depression period you know 1930s when the great depression hit it was realized that had the classical theory been successful we would never reach to a stage of you know depression and that is when this theory was formulated he said keen said that full employment is a rare scenario where the classical had always said that you know economy will always reach full employment and secondly very important aspect which was included in his theory was that government intervention which was you know ignored in the classical theory is necessary for us to achieve full employment so this is basically the background of this particular theory so now guys let us quickly run through the assumptions of this particular theory number 1 this is a short run analysis why because keynes always believed that in the long run we all are dead and all his analysis are based on short run secondly technology and stock of capital are constant obviously they cannot change in the short run thirdly there is perfect competition in product and labor market fourthly increasing cost increasing cost basically means that if we want to produce more we have to incur more costs for example if we are producing 10 units we are incurring 100 rupees as the cost and if we are producing 20 units we have to incur 200 rupees as the cost so as the production increases the cost also increases next guys it is based on a closed economy analysis that is the foreign sector is kept out lastly government is you know included and government is brought in basically as a solution to stabilize the economy So firstly guys before we head to the main theory let me give you a little outline of the theory so you can clearly understand where are we heading to so basically to determine the level of output and employment in the economy we have to determine effective demand now you might be wondering what is effective demand because as per my knowledge i'm sure you've never heard this term before but remember guys when we are studying the keynesian theory this term is going to come again and again so what is effective demand effective demand is basically dependent on two things ADF and ESF which we will be discussing in detail which is the aggregate demand function and aggregate supply function and at what point is the effective demand uh, you know found out it is found out at the point where ADF is equal to ESF so remember one thing that effective demand is a very highly crucial factor in determining the level of output and employment in the keynesian theory So now guys moving ahead to the first most important function which is the aggregate supply function commonly known as ASF. So guys we all know that a producer definitely incur some cost of production when he is producing a good any normal producer right he will incur some variable cost some fixed cost and when he incurs that cost of production while he is selling that product he will expect a minimum amount for that particular product right isn't that obvious so basically the cost of production gives us the minimum expected receipts which is a very important term under ASF so any rational producer would like to cover at least that cost of production if we you know produce the product at 500 we would like to get at least 500 when we sell the product maybe more than that but the minimum will be 500 right so basically that is the minimum expected receipts when we are talking about the ASF and all individual suppliers or you know individual firms would like to expect a minimum amount 
when we aggregate all the individual supply functions we get the aggregate supply function which is the asf let me show you the schedule and diagram after which you will be crystal clear with this concept so here we see in the schedule guys we have the minimum expected receipts and on this side we have level of employment and output so as we notice that as you know level of employment increases from 10 20 30 40 our minimum expected receipts are also increasing from 400 600 800 thousand 1200 so on but after a point of time when we've reached full employment level then it is but obvious because we've reached full employment it is difficult that our output and employment can increase because logically so now we've already reached full employment so after this point of time though the level and out of output and employment remains constant at 50 our minimum expected receipts still keeps on increasing from 1200 to 1400 and so on and so forth Similar to the schedule, what we've studied here, we'll just plot it on the graph, so which will give us the ASF, uh, you know, curve shape of the curve. So on the y-axis, we have the minimum expected receipts and on the x-axis, we have employment. Initially, guys, we notice the, the shape, the curves begins from the zero point or origin, you can say. Initially, both of them are increasing, right? Both the level of output and employment and the cost are increasing. But after a point of time, when we reach full employment level, which is QF level, our minimum expected receipts or basically our uh, output and employment cannot increase. But our cost keeps on increasing and that is why this is the shape of, you know, uh, our supply curve and that is why we get this shape initially increasing and then you know just going up straight vertical and parallel to the y-axis so i hope you are clear with the concept what is asf the asf schedule as well as the asf curve so now moving ahead to the next most important term under Keynesian theory which is adf called the aggregate demand function so just as, as we study the aggregate supply function, the aggregate demand function is the aggregation of all the individual demand functions, right? And hence the name ADF. So what does this say? Okay, so this time guys, we are thinking from the consumer point of view. That time while the supply side, we were thinking what a producer, the minimum what a producer would expect when he's selling something. But here we are thinking from the consumer point of view and which means the maximum a consumer is willing to pay. So when we go and buy something, we say, okay, this is my upper limit. Above that, I will not buy at all. You know, that is my upper limit. So that is why it is called the maximum expected sale proceeds, what the maximum the consumers are ready to pay for anything. How much I pay definitely depends on my income, right? And income depends on the output and employment. ADF guys is a positive function. Why is it a positive function? Because as the output increases, the demand price increases and hence though you might just see that demand you know curve is a negatively sloping curve but when we study ADF remember guys it is a positive function and it slopes upward just like how the supply curve is. So coming to the ADF uh, schedule guys so again here we have the level of output and here on the right hand side we have maximum expected sale proceeds. Initially we notice that as you know our output employment increased from 10, 20, 30, 40 our maximum expected sale proceeds also increase from 550, 700, 850,000 and so on and so forth. After a point of time when we reach full employment level which is at 50, now we cannot increase the output and employment right because we are already at full employment but our sale proceeds, our cost keeps on increasing and you know from 1000 to 1150 to 1300 and so on. Similarly plotting this on our graph we here over get our ADF curve which is a positive function remember guys also it never begins from the origin it begins from point a why does that happen because you know even at zero level of income there are some consumption basic needs which one has to incur so it will never begin from zero or origin but it will begin from point a and we notice that with the level of employment and output increasing our demand price or maximum expected sale proceeds increase and hence we get a straight line you know not a straight line sorry up upward sloping uh, curve so this is all about the adf function so now guys moving ahead to the actual actual crux of the theory till now i taught you asf and adf individually but now we will move hand in hand together and study the actual theory and the point of equilibrium so when i taught you asf i told you that is the minimum uh, what the producer is expecting when he sells a product and when i taught you adf i told you that is the maximum what a consumer is willing to pay for a product for example when we go to any market for example like the kulaba causeway right and we say ki, you know we are buying some t-shirt maybe 
and we say that max, my maximum is 500 and the seller he says ki madam main to 700 se kam nahi de sakta i say i will pay only 500 he says 700 and then when what happens is ultimately we reach a point of equilibrium which is 600 i say 600 mein dena hai to do otherwise i'm going and then he gives me at 600 so basically that 600 what is it it is the equilibrium point that's what i'm telling you when adf is equal to asf so let us move over here adf is equal to asf is the point of equilibrium i've told, told you already asf is also known as the supply price you know when we're seeing from the supply point of view which can also be told as the cost whereas adf is also known as the demand price which is the revenue so in other words equilibrium or ac asf is equal to adf is, can also be told as cost is equal to revenue point so now there are three important conditions guys first one being when asf and adf are equal to each other when cost and equilibrium uh, sorry cost and revenue are equal to each other it is the equilibrium level of output and employment definitely when cost and revenue equalize that is the equilibrium point second condition when asf is more you know the asf is more than adf in that case our cost is more than a revenue and in that situation obviously jab cost zada hai than the revenue then our output and employment have a tendency to decrease remember that guys thirdly when adf is more than asf what is adf the revenue when r is more than the c it is but obvious guys that output and employment have a tendency to increase so remember these three very important conditions under keynesian equilibrium and we know guys i told you right in the beginning that asf is equal to adf is the equilibrium point at point where we get the effective demand which ultimately determines the equilibrium of output and employment in an economy and that which occurs before we reach full employment yes in case you've not read i've clearly written at less than full employment level so in the keynesian theory we reach equilibrium before we reach the full employment level so that is what keynes is trying to so guys moving ahead to the last part of the Keynesian theory for this particular video so firstly the schedule which is very similar to what I just taught you initially we notice guys we have ASF ADF the comparison and the behavior which I've put in we notice that you know initially our ADF is more than ASF in the first three scenarios 550 more than 400 700 more than 600 850 more than 800 in this case our output and employment will go on increases when in ADF is more okay then we see that at point 40 we reach the equilibrium level where asf is equal to adf which is the equilibrium level of output and employment further we notice guys that at 50 level of full employment our asf is more than adf which ultimately means that our output and employment will fall so these are the three scenarios but what you have to notice is here that we have reached full employment uh, we have reached equilibrium before we have reached full employment level which is 50 50 is our full employment level but we have reached equilibrium at 40 and that is boy where our asf is equal to adf i've plotted this on this particular graph also you can clearly see on the x-axis guys we have level of output and employment on the y-axis with we have minimum and maximum sale proceeds so we have our asf curve which begins from origin and then ultimately goes up i just taught you right and then we have in blue we have our adf curve which begins from point a which i've already taught you and then goes on you know increasing now where we see that the equilibrium is established at point e where adf is equal to asf this is the level of effective demand and we notice that before this point our, we can clearly see the blue line is above the red line right and adf is more than asf which ultimately leads to increase in the output and employment helping us reach the equilibrium point whereas on the other hand we see when the red line is above the blue line it means asf is greater than adf in this situation ultimately we move you know the output and employment will fall and we will reach back to equilibrium level so e is our equilibrium level qe which is here we have price at pe this is the equilibrium level what you have to remember is we have reached equilibrium before we have reached full employment level which is at qf why is that we saying keynes is saying that it is a shortfall of aggregate demand which is the cause of unemployment if we increase the adf because you know in the short run our asf cannot be changed so it is the onus lies on adf so if we increase the adf we will ultimately reach the full employment level I will discuss this further aspect, you know, this cause and remedies to remove unemployment, the criticisms, whereas, you know, other things regarding this particular theory in my next video. Till then, this is all from my side. I hope this video was useful for you. If it was, please do comment in the below comment section below. And thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.
Tschüss.